Hi, everybody, and welcome to Off the Record. I'm Michael Landsberg. Stand by for an interview with Joni Lauer. You may know her better as China. So many questions to ask. Is there bad blood with the World Wrestling Federation? Is there bad blood with Stephanie McMahon? The answer to both those questions is yes. Candid, no holds barred interview with Joni Lauer. Next. <laughs> Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Cake Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. This show lately has been on fire. Cuban, Priestley, Billy D. you saw Booker T on Monday and today. Let me introduce you to someone you've never met before, but someone that you've known very well for a long time. A woman who's doing some acting where she finally won't get caned by an irate Mr. Fuji. Great to welcome to our show. Used to know her as China. Uh, I've always known her as Joni Lauer. Nice to see you, Joni. Thanks, Michael. Our audience loves wrestling. They got some questions. Let me start by saying there are a million questions that wrestling fans want me to ask you, and none of them involves, so what's Vince really like? Let's get to the heart of the matter, and I try okay. to ask you some real tough questions that our audience wants answered. The fact is your WWF contract expired on November the 1st. I want to ask you what happened. Did you want out, and what's the real story? Um... Well, my contract was up for renewal, and um, probably, I would say, almost a year ago, um, the company asked me to resign. It was um, uh, before Vince purchased WCW, but very close to the purchase of WCW. And um, they came to me with a contract which I felt was, one, unacceptable, um, because you have to understand that I was going into the next five years of my life. And at that point, I felt that I was really at the top of my game. I felt that I had enormous popularity. Um, I felt better than I ever had before. I looked better than I ever had before. And I felt like I was really on top of things. And I had an enormous amount of opportunity that was coming to me um, on an outside level. You know, other television, movies, um, playboys, et cetera, um, which I was not allowed to take advantage of as long as I was with the World Wrestling Federation. So what do you think was Vince's motivation? Because from what I heard, you wanted about 800. He offered you a long way below that 225. There's no question that you had enormous popularity. So why do you think that Vince softened on the idea of making you very top of his roster, number one? And number two, why were you unhappy? Well, I, first of all, I didn't even ask for that amount, which you're um, talking about, which I thought was disgustingly low. Um, from a female point of view, um, because I did feel that I was top talent there. And um, every day for that company, I, I worked like I was top talent. And I was included um, in every other aspect as far as top talent was concerned, except for financially, in my eyes, which really didn't bother me because um, I felt like um, I would have worked for something I thought was fair. And I felt like what I was asking for was way beyond fair. Now, you wanted storylines that involved you wrestling men, right? And Vince, for the most part, wanted you to wrestle against women. Was that, well, was that at the heart of one of the problems? Yeah, and I, I was going to venture into that. So, I mean, primarily financially, I was doing well, but I, I can tell you that when I did my Playboy, um, I made more money doing one Playboy than I had in five years cumulatively of working for the company which is fine, but, and I would have continued to do things outside ventures as China, promoting the company, but I felt it fair that I should make the money for doing that as well. But, um, yeah, my character was going backwards. Um, I, for six years, I had wrestled men. Um, I learned something from them every day. I, my moniker was being this uh, female killer, uh, the great equalizer, if you will. And then all of a sudden, um, I wasn't supposed to fight the guys anymore, and I was supposed to be this women's champion, and who was I going to fight, but and what was I going to do? But is it possible that that was not dictated so much by Vince, but, but more by the audience, that the public does not want to see, in particular the wrestling public, men losing to women? And for sure, for a man, it's uh, perhaps a death knell to his career to lose to a woman. That may not sound fair, but it's bad business, possibly, to push a woman to beating men. In my opinion, the average woman, yes. But we'd gone way beyond that. I battled that the first two years I was there, not at that point in my career. Can you understand why a man guess. wouldn't want to wrestle against you? Because losing to you 
is, is just not good for your image. Yeah, but there was nobody there at that point that didn't want to wrestle me. No male there that didn't want to wrestle me. And the it other wasn't side even the... a um, it wasn't even a consideration. Most of the men wanted to work with me at that point. So I felt just for me as a career option, how was I then going to step backwards and wrestle women that didn't have the experience from the guys that I was wrestling every day? And, and you know, that's people want to see the China that, you know, grew and, and wrestled guys and, and did that great stuff. They don't want to see somebody that's, you know, See, Not the unusual <laughs> thing about what you do is that there's no true job description of being a wrestler. Like a running back, if he plays in the National Football League, you tell him, gain yards. But a wrestler really has no job description. But the unwritten rule is that one wrestler gets another wrestler over. Sure. And, and, and it, wasn't it your job more maybe than you actually put into play to get other women over? I don't think it would have been possible. I still think it would have been an impossibility. There was, there's only so much you can do. You're only as good as the person that you work with, but you have to have ability there yourself. And, you know, I'm not demeaning the other women because I think it's great. I think there should be, that's the wonderful thing about wrestling, that there's a variety of all. But, it, you know, it's an impossibility to put somebody who is very good in the ring and put them in with somebody that doesn't know anything and try and, you know, you know, make them wrestlers. And, and I think it's, plus it was going from one extreme to the other. And in particular, there was the Lita storyline, right? Which I, I believe Vince wanted you uh, to be there to get Lita over. And essentially, sure. essentially you refused, right? Absolutely By your not. actions in the ring. I don't, I don't mean that you refused verbally, but, but you, you, you squashed her, right? Oh, I don't think I squashed her at all. I think I gave, if you go back and look at the pay-per-view, I gave Lita a very fair, uh, a wonderful opportunity. I put her over like a million bucks. I wrestled with her. She had never wrestled with any woman like me. Now, who won that match? I did. By a landslide. <laughs> okay. And, um, <laughs> you know, if asked, and I never was, um, if asked to drop the belt to her after that pay-per-view or, you know, if Vince would have said, go out and pick your nose, I would have done it. I don't care. I know it's fake. But, um... You know, I was never asked to do that, and I was never asked to wrestle again. I want to talk to you about romance in the locker room, and we'll do that when Off the Record returns with Joni Lauer. Stay with us. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. You know, there are storylines, and then there are storylines based on life, and Vince has always liked to bring the two together. Mm -hmm. um, certainly in your life, you were, and it's common knowledge, involved with Triple H um, on a romantic years, level yeah. for five years. years. And it's also common knowledge that the storyline of Triple H and Stephanie McMahon is actually based on a real-life situation. So tell me whether your relationship with Triple H and now his relationship with Stephanie sped up your departure from the WWF. Well, officially... You, you know, I could say no, but um, I don't think I'll ever know the answer to that. In the back of my mind, I'd like to say, of course, because, you know, um, I always tried to keep that separate, and I did not know that they had a relationship going on, if you will. Um, when I found out, I was devastated. It hurt me. I'm a human being, and nobody, whether you're a celebrity or, you know, whether you're not, likes to be cheated on or uh, especially when it's with the boss's daughter. Um, and it was, you know, a real difficult um, dilemma for me. I confronted it to the best I could, um, as professionally as I could, and tried not for that not to inhibit my career. Um, and then shortly after that, um, I was told that, you know, they wouldn't be needing me on TV anymore. So do I think it had some influence? Yeah, I do, because ultimately, I mean, I wonder how I would have actually gotten along with them there, I mean, in my face every day. It was a very difficult situation. But, you know, like I said, I did the very best I could, and even while that was going on, I still went out and performed in front of 20,000 to 50,000 people to the best of my ability and would have continued to do so as my career, you know? What do you think of, uh, of Hunter now? You know, I... I wish that situation was handled differently, and I would like to say that as 
being a woman and, and everything that I went through and how hard I worked to um, have the success that I've had. I wished that Stephanie would have taken different actions given the position that she was given. Did she ever talk to you about, no. about the triangle that was obviously um, leaving you out? No, and um, I, as a matter of fact, I never talked to any of them after that. Um, but on the other hand, um, if I really look at the situation and try and look at it, look at it a positive way, if there is a positive way, um, Paul and I were going different directions. I really, really wanted to do more movie and television. And Paul, since the time he was a little boy, has lived, eat, slept wrestling. And so do the McMahons. It's their business. And so uh, they were involved in a storyline. Um, Paul, you know, lived wrestling 24 hours a day, and I didn't. And so if there was anybody that I could see ending up together, it would be the two of them. And in retrospect, I mean, well, I'm very lucky we didn't end up getting married and have children or something. But, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not bitter because um, we've all moved on. I'm disappointed in how it was handled. But um, it, it hasn't changed my view of the business or my friends or, you know, any other aspect of, of, of the WWF. But are, are, does your bitterness, is it compounded by the fact that you were very good for Triple H's career? He came to the WWF with everything to be a superstar, but he had a hard time getting over until he was teamed with you. I mean, it would be natural to feel some kind of resentment towards him and towards the framework that allowed him now to move to the top outside of his injury and for you now to be moving on. It doesn't seem yeah. fair. No, it's com professionally I feel no bitterness. It was all completely on a personal level of my heart being broken as, as a human being, as a woman. Um, professionally, he, or he or has earned every bit of success that he's had. He's really good. He loves that business and he deserved everything as I did too because it's not like I was in the wings, you know, I was growing very successfully as he was. Um, so can couples work in the, in the World Wrestling Federation? I mean, history would say absolutely not. History would say if you want to wreck your relationship, just start going out with someone within the Fed. You know, someone like uh, Deborah and Stone Cold right now. Can well, that work? Isn't any different than any other business? I yeah, mean, I think it um, is. I think wrestling is different than almost any other business and because the storylines, because people are thrown together and they have romances and then they're torn apart and then someone else moves in. I mean, and it's, and it's all so very sexual that, yeah, I would think that it is different than other businesses. I think that I would have been able to handle it better if it were anybody else besides Stephanie. But I think that, um, you know, at the time when we were together, we were really good for each other and it made it all the better because we were together 24 hours a day. We lived the same business. So we were the only ones who really understood what we were going through. And um, those guys are my type of guys, too. I love them. I love their look. I love uh, their Speaking talent. of their look, what, what, what's your take on Stephanie, personally and professionally? I mean, I imagine you don't necessarily watch a lot of Raw now, but you've seen her and you've seen what she's doing and what her character looks like right now. What's your take on her personally and professionally? I, you put me on the spot with that question. Um, I think that she hasn't found her true identity yet. I think that she's a little bit immature in her actions. And I think that she's under a lot of pressure, I know, being in that position. Um, and, you know, uh, it's not my position to judge. You know, people say, well, how do you feel about her taking Paul? You know, but you don't take anybody. You have to go willingly. And, you know, I, I don't blame Stephanie for that. I blame Paul. Beautifully and, put. Um, and you, you, you know, you know what? You sound like um, you sound sad and upset, but but not bitter, which has come across in this. What are you gonna do? You know, I. Well, that doesn't prevent a lot of us from being that way. I got a lot more I want to talk to you about. She's Joni Lauer. I want to talk to her about uh, some women that have preceded her in leaving the World Wrestling Federation. We'll do that when off the record returns. Stay with us. The Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by Coke. Enjoy. By SportCheck.ca, Canada's choice for sporting goods. And by the new Subaru Impreza WRX. Pure performance and the beauty of Subaru all-wheel drive.
four seconds. These planes to check everything off your Christmas. <laughs> We're having a great chat with Joni Lauer. Used to be known as China. You have left the World Wrestling Federation, and you spoke to us candidly about your thought process and what evolved why you left the Fed. The name that comes to mind for many of us, if you think about women in the World Wrestling Federation, leaving the Fed, appearing in Playboy before you, of course, has to be Sable. There's a natural comparison. How are you going to be different in Sable, who's had very modest success since leaving, and how much have you looked to her for an example of maybe not how to do it? Well, I think, first of all, it is um, natural for many people to compare me um, to her because of the fact um, she did a couple of first you know, appearances on in acting to different television shows in Playboy magazine. But I think, on the other hand, too, um, the business was so different at that time when she was emerging and when she left and then I kind of stepped into a whole different environment. Um, the business was growing bigger and stronger and quite frankly I had a lot more opportunity and did so much more. And um, it just being the fact that I, I felt like I was kind of in a different league, I, I did something different than Rena did. So for me it was never a competitive aspect. It, it was you know apples and oranges. I can't help um, but think about it, though. I'm thinking that of all the people on the World Wrestling Federation roster that exist right now and maybe the few that have left since the WCW ceased to exist, you were probably hurt most by that. Because if the WCW would have existed, you would have had an option and you would have been able to force Vince to say, hey, you know what, yeah, I'll give you what you want. Do you think back to that and think of how bad it was for you and how bad a time is this to be a wrestler now, given the fact that there is no competition? Well, yeah, because, I mean, it wasn't even a forcing somebody to give give me what I wanted. It was a negotiation process, and at that point, when there's a monopoly, there's really not a whole lot of negotiation going on. Um, and plus the fact that I did have opportunity, and, you know, you want to advance in your job. The person working at the bookstore wants to always advance in their job. We all want to grow professionally. I want to grow professionally, individually, as a person, and my opportunity. And I would be a fool if I wouldn't want to take advantage of all of the things that were coming my way, regardless of, you know, who brought them to me or, you know, why I had the opportunity. I worked hard and I deserved the things that were coming to me and I don't want to take those opportunities. What do you say to the women that are left in the Fed, the ones that are, are just starting out, the ones like Trish and Stacy, the ones that were you um, six, seven years ago? Well, I think that they... Um, a little motherly advice from the veteran. Well, I think one of the things that's made me very different, the, the question maybe that you asked about the difference between Rena and myself, why I have continued to succeed. Um, one, it has not been an easy transition so far. I've worked my buns off, and if anybody really knew how hard... Um, well, I, can... I, I, I can speak for most saying the buns are still there. <laughs> I mean, you walked ahead of me down the hallway. Go ahead. Yes, they're still there. Um, but... Um, you know, nobody gives you anything, really. The reality of it is, and um, you know, I've, I am still working very hard. I think people are thinking, well, just because I'm, you know, China and I'm a famous personality now, I could go out and do whatever I want, and that is so not the case. Because to the outside world, I'm not China anymore. I don't own the name. I, can't I want to find out what you're doing, but I want you to give some advice to Trish and Stacy and and Lita, the ones that that have been left behind. And Tori, work as hard as you can. Be conscious of the people that you're working with. Develop friendships and relationships on an honest, true level. Um, be um, always conscious of the fact that the bubble will burst one day, regardless of when and where Should and why. Should they trust Vince? Yeah, on a business level. But it depends on how you look. Vince is business. And um, business in the real world means you're not there to be his friend. You're there to work for him and to bring him success and to put fannies in the seats. Did you make the mistake thinking he'll take care of you, that, that the relationship will always continue as it was? No, I never thought that. I knew one day, um, because in watching everyone else, that um, you know I was no different than anybody else. And that we all get older, our bodies break down, um, we all have different values as we progress. I'm slouching as I hear you say that, my body's breaking down as we're speaking. We'll take I mean, a break. I, you never expect when it's going to happen, but yeah. I think... Amen I to always, that. I always knew, yeah.
Uh, we're going to go to break. As we go to break, we always uh, want to know your thoughts. Michael, there's no doubt your show is known for certain things, the truth, the fights, the guests, but most of all, the wrestling. Good to see you go back to doing what you do best. That from Cubes. And uh, you know what? Thrilled to have this woman sitting here. This for you, Joni. God knows you poured your heart and soul into wrestling. I hope everything else works out for you in the future. Best of luck. From Teddy in Edmonton, and we'll find out exactly what that is when Off the Record returns. Stay with us. top of the show that I wanted to ask you the tough questions and I did and I respect the fact that there is a pause before everything you said and I could I could actually feel you reflecting on what's the right answer and I, I really on behalf of our audience admire the fact that it came from the heart even though um, it's obvious that your heart's been broken a few times over the last little while it does but at the same you know at the same token like I said it doesn't change the fact that I, I you know I love those people the people that I work with the people that worked in the marketing and the camera crews and all the people just as you I'm sure you develop a no, real I don't like family any of these and a relationship there, just so you know, you know? <laughs> yeah. no. no you're right it's but, uh, very much a family I, atmosphere absolutely yeah so it makes me miss them and want them to flourish and do very well and and um, and at the same time you know my whole life changed overnight and you know let's I, talk about that life yeah. tell me what you're up to uh, first of all tell me about um, your play the comedy I'm actually very excited to do this because um, I love entertainment, I love theater, and um, I started doing a lot of filming, especially here in Toronto. I feel like I'm up here every week now. But um, a friend of mine asked me to do this play, and I said no at first. And it's a young kid from Birdcade Productions, mm -hmm. and um, he was trying to build his production company and do this play. I read the script. I love the script. We should mention the name, right? It's My, my Darling, Darling Judith. Judith. Yep, I play Judith. And where's it playing? It's a comedy. It's at the Living Arts Center. And um, I, you know what? There's a ton of wrestling fans who want to show, if for no other reason than just to catch a glimpse of you, how can they get tickets? They can call the Living Arts Center right now, and they could also log on to bodybyjoni.com or uh, www.birdcageproductions.com. You almost slipped an F in there after the two <laughs> WWs, but maybe that F stands for something a little different now. But it's a and great, how about Playboy? It's a great play. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. And you're back in Playboy, right? You had the largest sailing edition ever, and you'll be back in Playboy on newsstands, and what's the month? It's a January cover. Right. It'll come out December 1st, and this especially more than ever, I'm really proud of because... Um, Playboy stepped up to the plate, and I'm doing it kind of on my own two feet. And um, not only is the content very cool, because it's very ethereal, it reminds me of a video game, really cool stuff we did, but because it's um, Joni, and I'm really proud mm -hmm. of that. And I feel like uh, I kind of have a new family, and, and um, Playboy's very, been and very good And the head of the family, me. right, the, the patriarch is Hugh Hef, yeah. right? How do you compare Hugh Hefner and Vince McMahon? Any similarities? Well, you're talking about two very, very different businesses. Mm -hmm. um, I only got a few seconds left. I know it's a tough half is business too, but um, and where I respect both of them is that they both gave me opportunities. And they both, I understand, have great bathrobes. Thanks both so bathrobes. much for joining Good us bathrobes. on Off the Record. Oh.